All right, before I start the video, I want to say that originally this video was just going to be about how to properly erase a file on both an SSD and a hard drive with the disk, platter, moving parts, and all that. But the more research I did, the more I realized that doing this on an SSD is very difficult, if not impossible, at least to remove the file directly. And this isn't something I knew was the case for SSDs. So for people working in privacy conscious environments, this is something that would definitely make or break your operational security. But in today's video, I'm basically going to show the differences between actually removing a file and scrubbing it on both a hard disk drive and an SSD. All right, so I have Kali Linux open and I'm gonna go ahead and use a tool called Autopsy. And I actually have an SSD on this laptop, but that doesn't really matter because the difference between the hardware only affects how the data is read at below the operating system level. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you something really quick. If I go ahead and open Autopsy, I've already prepped a few drives that I'm gonna go ahead and analyze here. And just to kind of show you exactly what it is, I'm going to go ahead and show you this first, actually. These three drives right here. So these are three image files, drive image files. This one has a file that has not been deleted. In other words, moved to the trash folder of this Linux system. This one has a drive or sorry, a file that was moved to the trash folder. And this one I went over with the shred tool. So this one is not only deleted, but shredded also. Now I'm going to show you what exactly you can recover for each of these different drives. Now I don't have access to the lab equipment you would apparently need to be able to uh, forensically analyze a SSD below the operating system level. And I don't have what's called an open channel SSD. And more, I'll go more into that in the future. But this is autopsy. This lets me see what's in drives. I'm going to go ahead and open my little test environment here. If I click OK, I could just go through that host one. And here are my three drives right here. So as you can see, mount shows that this says one, this is one, and then this is just a raw file right here. And you can see the partition scheme here. I think that's what it's called. To be honest, I'm kind of new to this anyway, but I'm going to go ahead and show you what this looks like. So yeah, a bunch of categories up here and I'm going to go ahead and check out file analysis. So I have a few files right here. I have the default lost and found file that gets generated with any ext4 partition, if you format it that way in Linux, but this is hello.txt. I created this file on this drive before I unmounted it and put it into autopsy so I could forensically analyze it. As you can see, it says, hello world, this wasn't in the file itself, but this is just some information about it and i don't think this says anything at all yeah this is just you know navigation stuff this is pretty simple just a file and that's pretty much it shows some more information about you know metadata and whatnot let's take a look at the dummy file or sorry the dummy deleted host here so if we take a look at this even if we go to file analysis it may not be there and sometimes it won't even show up in the deleted files but it's still present in the actual drive itself. Now this partition is so small, I think there are some artifacts that kind of messed with the way it recovers deleted files. I don't know if it just reads the headers and footers of stuff and whatnot. I don't know whether it needs, you know, a partition table, which these drives did not have. So I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the metadata. Or actually, you know what? Keyword search. Now the file that I deleted was just called, I think, dummy deleted or something like that. So if I search for this right here, yeah, it found it. And it was really easy to find too. So we have dummy deleted. Yeah, that was the name of the file. Then deleted. I know that is the text within uh, the file itself. And as you can see, if someone really was determined, there are other tools other than autopsy, whatever version of it this is, that can see that this is there. And even if you didn't have the foresight, the knowledge, but prior to know that the file name was dummy deleted or that the text within the file was this file has been deleted, you can see that it's still here, right? Now let's take a look at this other one here, this other drive, this last one where I actually went through and I scrubbed it completely. So I scrubbed the entire drive. That's why it says raw. Uh, it doesn't recognize the partition because there's absolutely nothing there. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. If we click analyze over here, data unit. Hold on, let me remember how to do this real quick. First off, a lot of these categories are grayed out because it has no idea what to make of the data in this drive. And that's because I pretty much scrambled it with a bunch of random stuff. Okay, so I just picked a, a random unit in this drive that I completely scrambled. And as you can see, it is nothing, nothing at all. If I just pick another unit here at random, if I click view, nothing. This is completely random. There's nothing in here that's decipherable at all. Yeah, no way anybody is making this out. That is, if you try to do this at the operating system level, and let me explain here. 
because in order to understand why your SSD files are not completely scrubbed, you have to understand how both an, an HDD, hard disk drive, and an SSD work. I'm not gonna go over the super specifics here, but the main difference between an SSD and an HDD is that HDDs are just a disc with an arm, right? And this arm moves left and right, and the disc spins, and then whatever's at the tip of this arm here magnetizes the point underneath it on the platter, either up or down. And that determines whether or not the um, spot right there is a one or a zero. And that makes up the entirety of your drive. That's how you can run Windows or Mac or Linux or whatever it is. And it's pretty simple stuff. Now, prior, the reason why people, if they were concerned with forensic analysts going through disks or wiping it multiple times, if the density in cells based on the side of the platter wasn't big enough, then analysts could potentially see what is called residual magnetism. This is a terrible way to show this, but think of this snippet being a zoomed up portion of this. So if the cells themselves, I'm gonna draw a bunch of dots here. Now there'd be multiple millions of them. I'm just gonna draw it like that just for simplicity. If the cells here were spread far enough out and there weren't enough of them width wise, then there'd be enough room for there to be a bit of residual magnetism as the arm goes over it, right? So that means that somebody with enough good equipment and somebody who's smart enough could go through a drive that was probably very well overwritten. It's just that if it wasn't overwritten multiple times with multiple passes, you could still infer what various bits of information were. And because of that, stuff could be uncovered on the drive. And that's not good, right? So as a result, people would start going through many of their hard drives with multiple passes. They would do it multiple times. And one thing I haven't mentioned yet is that defragmenting is a thing on many PCs and computers because all of the data associated with the program was pretty close together in the drive, or at least easy to access, pretty close together. The arm wouldn't have to move as far or the, uh, the disk didn't have to spin as far in order to get it. And because of that, your computer would be slightly faster if you were loading something like large amounts of small video files, etc., in like video editing or something like that. Now that's the background with a hard disk drive. Data, as far as it was being written and read, was at the discretion of the operating system. SSDs are different, and that's because many SSDs have what's called a translation layer, and that is due to the way that SSDs work. So SSDs have a number of cells. You can think of cells as the same thing as the dots I was going over with, with the hard disk drive. Each dot represents a zero or a one. You can think of cells in an SSD having either a zero or a one, even though there are exceptions to that. For instance, each cell can have multiple zeros or ones that can store more than one bit, but we're not going to get into that right now because those SSDs kind of suck and they don't last as long anyway. All right, so each one of these cells is either a one or a zero. And due to the way these work, each cell has a limited number of write cycles before it breaks and it falls apart. I don't know exactly why that works. I'm not going to pretend to understand. I just know that it does. So your SSD has what's called a translation layer. So you have Windows, or whatever it is. I'm gonna draw a really shitty Windows logo really quick here. And Windows wants to write something to the disk, so it sends something to your SSD. And the first part of your SSD is the translation layer. And the translation layer decides what cells get written because its job is to make sure your SSD lasts the longest. So if all of your data was close together, that wouldn't be as efficient because that means you, if you are using multiple bits of information here repeatedly, these cells would deteriorate faster and then your SSD wouldn't last as long. So what does it do instead? It diversifies or it distributes the level of writes across your entire disk. Now, when it comes to privacy and or writing something that you don't want anybody else to access or if you are doing privacy sensitive work, this can be a bit of a problem because that means that if you delete something, as you guys know probably, if you delete something on your operating system, it's not actually deleting anything. Right? It's not going into the drive and then overriding it with free space. All it does is it marks it as available. All right? And that's not even the actual data itself. That is in its own little table of contents. You know, it's a partition table that goes, all right, these spots right here are available. Feel free to write over those whenever you want. Now, that's how HDDs work, hard drives with disks. And SSDs do that also, but with a little bit of a twist. Because they have to... Because this translation layer's goal is to increase the lifespan of the disk, I just drew a little mini clock there for some reason, what it does is that, but with a few differences. Because it has to diversify its cells, 
that it has to write to, what it will do is it'll pick a bunch of cells at random. And what it does is it marks those cells as free. But if you save another version of a file or something, this all happens unbeknownst to your operating system because it's past this translation layer. Another version of your file will be saved to different cells. So what that means is that if a forensics team got a hold of your SSD, they would be able to recover old versions of your files. Whereas this would not be possible in this sense with a typical HDD. So in other words, even though there's nothing here, this is all above the operating system layer. Now there is a caveat to this because there are multiple different kinds of SSDs. There are what's called closed channel and open channel SSDs. Now the difference between those is that open channel SSDs don't have this translation layer between the operating system and the SSD. Now what does that mean? It means that your operating system has direct access to the cells, right? So that means this Windows or Linux or Mac OS or whatever would have direct access and, and have the ability to record and understand what cells they're writing to when they're saving something. So in the event of physical compromise, if your adversary doesn't have, you know, the laboratory tools and equipment needed to be able to forensically analyze your SSD directly, as in physically, if you have an open channel SSD, you are in a worse spot. However, this is also a good thing. Let me explain. If you're in a position where you are a journalist in another country, and whatever you were working with was sensitive or your life was at risk or something like that. If something were to happen to your drive, if you had a moment beforehand and the SSD you were using, I should probably label this. There we go. And the SSD you were using was an open channel SSD. It would be theoretically possible to write some kind of program that would be able to shred individual files the same way it would on an HDD, right? Because with HDDs, you understand exactly where your files are because they're all really close together and there is no translation layer between the operating system and the hard drive. Now, I don't know if any program that does this for SSDs yet. Right now, your best bet is either to encrypt the drive or drives beforehand with an SSD and then remove the key. That'd be the fastest way to do it. Let's say, I don't know, some foreign adversary stormed in through your door. You could somehow delete the key. That'd be the, that's as fast as it gets, I think. And they would never be able to get anything unless they had a quantum computer or something like that. But if you were somehow able to get a program, let's say you didn't encrypt the drive and, and you somehow want to encrypt it quickly enough that in the event of physical compromise, you're still okay. You know, you're still safe in whatever foreign country you're in. You can still shred individual files or directories, even recursively, just because there's no translation layer, because the operating system now is aware of what's happening on the SSD the same way they are at the HDD. Anyway, in short, if you're going to use an SSD, just understand that you should encrypt it first and be prepared to lose everything if you're working in sensitive environments. And if whatever reason you're, and for whatever reason, if your SSD gets seized and the investigators have the means to peer into the SSD below the operating system level, that is, if you have a closed channel SSD, they're going to see what's on it, even if you delete it or scrub it. And if you have an open channel SSD, you're going to make their lives even easier if you don't have something that scrambles your deleted files, which as far as I know, that doesn't exist yet unless there's some proprietary firmware thing. So I guess that means if you're doing anything privacy related, you should use hardware with an HDD because that way you know exactly how your data is handled.